Hello, my beautiful buds. Welcome back to my channel, Sprouts with Joy. My name is Joy, and if you'd like to talk about plants, you're in the right place. About a week ago, week and a half ago, or something like that, I unboxed some plants. It was a plant tray for a friend, so we can zoom on back to that footage real quick. So I'm turning on the camera because I have an unboxing to do. I got sent a plant trade from my friend Natalie and I am very, very excited. I sent my half of the plant trade a little while back and now I get to open the half that she's sending me. So let's, let's do it. I probably need to get a box cutter. <laughs> There's some notes. Oh, this is a cute card. Oh, stop. Oh my gosh. Look at these stickers. Those are really cute. Plant Shop Chicago. What? Yes. That's where Natalie and I like met in person. That's really fun. Oh my gosh. I love these stickers, Natalie. Thank you. This is apparently like plant tags for everything, which is so nice. I want to be surprised. So I'm going to open this last. Time to see what's in this bad boy. <laughs> I'm really excited. Natalie crochets things like she is incredible <laughs> at that art. I am not at all. I really admire people that are. So I do know, yes, this, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. This is a little string of pearls that is crocheted by Natalie. Dude, look at that. That is adorable. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'll have to figure out exactly where I want to put this, but this is so sweet. Thank you, Natalie. Oh my gosh. Look at that. I love it. Isn't that the cutest thing you've ever seen? People are so creative, I swear. I'm excited about that. Honestly, I might like hang it in my car or something. I feel like that would be like get like a little mini macrame hanger. Oh my gosh. Let's see how these guys fared. It has been really cold. There is like a lot of insulation, so <laughs> fingers crossed. We're both like, I really hope I don't see. Okay, here's the first one. Oh my goodness. Okay, this I believe is the Syngonium Frosted Heart. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, and okay, this is, this must be the El Chogo Red. Hang on, one at a time. <laughs> oh my gosh, this looks so good, Natalie. Look at this. Oh, that's gorgeous. And it has a new leaf on the way too. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I can't wait. And I, I love, love, love velvet leaf philodendron and also any sort of plants that have like red backs to the leaves. And I'm sure Natalie knows this because she watches literally all of my videos. Thank you. Okay, this right here. Okay, this is even more beautiful than I expected it to be. I'm pretty sure this is a Syngonium Frosted Heart. It was like a few months ago we like talked about it. But I think it's Frosted Heart. I mean, I can always double check. And that other envelope that she sent. But, okay, I really love the texture of the leaves. I know in general, I, I've been kind of stinking on Syngonium a little bit, but like I'm most bothered by, I think the Podophyllum species and like all the cultivars within that, but this is like a different species. I'll have to like look a little bit more into it, but that's really beautiful. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's so exciting. Okay, okay. It seems, oh, oh my gosh. There's a lot more in here. Dude, okay. She's already being so generous. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, oh, okay. Dude. Okay, this plant is so robust. Okay, this is a Shangri-La Pothos, I believe. And this looks so healthy. Like, now, did you like clean all of the leaves before he sent them? Because they look immaculate. <laughs> like, look at that. They're so green and shiny. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. And there's like a new leaf coming in too, right there. Okay, that's fantastic. So like Shangri-La Pothos. And then this is Monstera Dubia. That's 
so sweet. And she knows I, I just got one, but I I will very happily like add them all to the same pot and like have a super nice full pot of Monstera Dubia. That's very exciting. And these are very well rooted too. Look at that. I'm excited. I think that there's more in here. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, this is a huge leaf. <gasps> Wait a sec, oh my gosh, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, first, also these are like so beautifully packaged, by the way. <laughs> this is such a creative way to... <sighs> okay, that is beautiful. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure this is Monstera Escaletto, which I've had my eye on. Natalie. Girl, are you kidding? This is so beautiful. Okay, I love how elongated these leaves are. That is like even more breathtaking in person than I could ever like possibly imagine. That's like really freaking beautiful. Okay, wow. Okay, and then this is a huge leaf. I am so impressed that you managed to package this. Oh my gosh. That's really cool, hang on. Okay, I need to check. <laughs> okay, okay, philodendron ruby juvenile or El Choco Red. So that goes with this one, Epicronum Arium Shaker La. So that goes with this. Okay, okay, I was right about this. Monstera Epipremnoides Escaletto, Epipremnoides. I never actually heard that that was a species. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. Okay, so Syngonia macrophyllum frosted heart. So that must be, I think, these guys over here. This is a Syngonium chia pets. Natalie, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that seems correct to me. But this is really awesome and massive. Like, look at that leaf. Dude, that is so generous. And then, yeah, Monstera dubia. Okay, okay, okay. Natalie, thank you so much. That's, that is, th these plants are so beautiful. Okay, so these are like a bunch of these. And then there's also monster, I can't hold it all at once. I, I was, I was gonna try, but I also have the string of pearls crochet piece in the Monster Dubia, but like, that's so fun. Well, I'm very excited to get these acclimated, get these all cozy in my collection. Okay, we're back. And if, you hear background noises, by the way. That's just my daughter playing. I gave her like a big bowl of water and she is going to town. So, okay, that unboxing was wonderful. The plants were beautiful, but I do have some really sad and disappointing news. Within a couple of days, a lot of those plants suddenly declined and I think that they actually sustained some cold damage or maybe just the shipping wasn't great. Honestly, like I'm not upset with my friend whatsoever. Like this sort of thing happens. She was more than generous. If anything, I feel bad that like she cut her plants and then they like died. Like, that just makes me really, really sad for her. <laughs> but like they were packaged really, really well. Shipping plants is just always a gamble, especially in the winter time. Like you never know how they're gonna take it. So I'll give you like the sad update. So not all of them are gone, but I think like some of my favorite ones are gone. I tried my hardest to save them, but here, I'll, sh I'll give you a look. I've been keeping them in this prop box just to give them a fighting chance, give them a boost of humidity. So I'll start with the saddest one. This is what's left of the Monstera Escaletto. And I'll give you a picture too of like what it looked like, like two days after receiving it. Yeah, the oh, no! node just, it's completely rotted from cold damage, you guys. It's really, really sad because that was absolutely gorgeous. Ugh. But if anything, I just see it as an excuse to like do another trade with her because I still really want that monster Escaletto. The other really disappointing one is the Syngonium Chia Pence. That one I thought might survive because it was just like the leaf that started dying off. But yeah, over the next few days after that, the note also started dying off. So yeah, it's it's a goner. So yeah, that one was also really disappointing. I mean, it's just, it's gone. 
it's gone and I really like that one as well and that was like such a good leaf such a good plant but again like it just it happens that's like just a heartache moment I think what happened there was an unexpected cold snap in my area and again like I want to reiterate like I don't think that it's her fault at all like it, these things happen and it was like the weather just unexpectedly took a turn and who knows what like how the shipping boxes were handled like it could have been cold damage it could have just been like maybe they're really rough with the shipping or something i don't know okay and then the next few plants though i do think are gonna be fine so it was just the escaletto and the chia pens that are like totally toast like these ones just like did not want to survive. They did not take it very well. The El Choco Red, I mean, it looks on the surface to be not good. Like the leaves that it had really took a nosedive, but it does have a new leaf coming in. And I think that the node is still healthy. So like that gives me a lot of hope that the El Choco Red is prevailing. It's, it's, it's hanging in there, which is really, really good. But I'll probably like trim away, you know, all these like dead parts. Let's see that right now, actually, while we're here. I'm just gonna trim off the dead parts cause they're gonna like rot anyways. And I don't want to introduce like more bacteria to the box if I can avoid it. Okay, so now it's just like one happy little leaf. I did investigate the roots when I transferred them to this plastic cup, so I think they're gonna be okay. Okay, and then the rest of these plants are looking in pretty good shape. So the Syngonium Frosted Heart, which I believe was the original plant that we agreed to trade. And I think I was gonna trade her, I was actually gonna trade her Syndapsis Lucens, but that plant in my collection has not been doing well. It's a very dramatic and temperamental plant. So then I ended up trading her a Philodendron Splendid and a Pink Princess in a cutting of um, a Hoya Lacunosa Silver. So like already she went above and beyond. Like again, I'm not upset. This one actually did pretty well. I think the roots are all still healthy. It has a new leaf coming in, which is great. The leaves sustain just a, li a little bit of cold damage but like, it's not bad at all. Like <laughs> all things considered, considering how some of the other plants went. Overall, this one looks totally fine. I'm so sorry, my daughter is so noisy. Okay, the Shangri-La Pothos is honestly thriving. It's like there's a little bit of discoloration on the leaves, probably from the cold, just a little bit. But other than that, I mean, the root systems are fantastic. Ooh. There's, these guys are super well rooted and all potted together. It'll make a really nice pot of Shangri-La Pothos, which I'm really excited about. They're honestly like looking totally great. These ones are fine. And the last one, the Monstera Dubia, um, the leaves are like a little bit discolored, maybe from the cold or the shipping stress. So like, they might die off, but the roots look really healthy. It's even grown a few new roots in this last week. So this one I think is gonna be totally fine. I'm gonna definitely be leaving the Frosted Heart, the El Choco Red, and the Dubia in the prop box. But today, if I have time, I might try to pot up the Shangri-La Pothos. I'm gonna see if my daughter will go down for her nap now because it's about that time and she is being really loud. <laughs> Okay, and then for the rest of this video, I'm honestly just planning to uh, putter around the pet collection and pamper my plants, give them some attention, whatever they need, basically, however much I can. I don't know if I'll be able to get around to my entire collection today, but I am planning on leaving town in a couple of days. And so I just want to make sure all my plants are like in order and watered and refreshed and their leaves are clean and all that sort of thing. Um, I'm also wanting to check for pests and make sure that there isn't anything fishy going on, if you know what I mean. I've also got my kids around the house today, so I'm gonna get interrupted a lot, but I've just kind of accepted that as a fact. <laughs> We're doing real life right now. First is this little corner. It's a little bit messy. Um, this is the shelf where I have like all my kids' toys and stuff, but it's also the home of my Syndapsis Pictus Exotica. And right here is just a little dead leaf, so I'm just gonna take that off or at least it was dying off let's see is there anything else going on here let me see i think it could be watered so yeah i will set this plant aside to water it and then i'll water a whole bunch of plants at the same time up here i've got a few random plants i need to refill the water on this propagation and I will also set these little orchids aside to water them because they definitely need to be topped up before I leave for vacation. Got a few plants in this corner. Let's 
be. This one definitely has a few dead leaves I need to trim. Hey guys, I've not really been keeping up with like trimming off yellowing leaves or dead leaves. I just, I haven't. It's one of those like extra plant chores that, you know, it's not imperative that it gets done necessarily. It's more for aesthetic purposes. So, you know, I just haven't been keeping up with it because I've been so busy, but. I've mainly been focusing on the essentials do you need a water? No, I think it'll be fine. I might water this like the day that I leave just to top it off, but it's not time to water it yet. Ignore this messy corner. This is my husband's corner where he can put things. <laughs> it usually winds up being like mail or random books that he's using for work. Let's see. Let's check on these plants. So I don't think this one needs to be watered. I mean, it's a snake plant, so. I think it'll be okay. Oh look, my green congo has a new leaf, which is great. This plant has been beat up with my toddler. Um, I think I need to replenish the soil down here. So if you can see, it's missing a lot of soil. So I need to replenish that. And I think I wanna clean these leaves. So let's do that real quick. I'm gonna go get some soil. I feel like I watered it a few days ago, but I don't really trust my memory. I'm gonna need to order more soil amendments and mix up some more soil pretty soon. All right, that's good. To make this leaf cleaning solution, I just mixed together some lemon juice, white vinegar, and a dash of Dawn dish soap and water. And that usually does the trick to just kind of shine up the leaves a bit, clean off the dust and the grime or any spots that it might have. I don't do this probably as often as I should, but I will say if you find yourself being like kind of a helicopter parent in terms of your plants, like you like to hover over them a lot, this might be a nice strategy to prevent overwatering. Like if you find yourself overwatering your plants, <laughs> I don't really have that problem usually unless I'm like really in a mood to take care of my house plants. But yeah. I do feel rather bad for this plant. I should probably chop away some of these leaves that are missing, giant chunks of them. But I mean, they're still working. They're still providing, they're, they still work. They still provide some photosynthesis. They're just, you know, mechanically damaged by my toddler. There she's looking a little bit more shiny. <laughs> Both of these guys could use a watering. Oops. <laughs> I think I'm gonna chop off this leaf, but just I wanna clean up this monster because it's looking a little bit messy. So I'm just pruning away the leaves that are not great. And sometimes when you prune monsters or pets in general, they will put off some new growth. So Before I start watering these plants, I wanted to show you, okay, look. So this is one of my just mini philodendron pink princess propagations that I have. And you know, the variegation on this was like fine, but kind of lackluster, but okay. All of a sudden it's throwing out this almost all pink leaf. Isn't that insane? Like, can you believe that? Like, look at how insanely pink that is. <laughs> it hasn't fully unfurled, but I'm excited to see what it looks like, but yeah. I'm considering maybe taking a top cut right here 
and adding it to the philodendron pink princess that I already kind of made for myself. Anyways, let's get to watering some plants. I don't have very much experience with orchids, but this sort of just functions kind of like a self-watering pot minus a wicking system because these are just two cash pows filled with orchid bark put in a vessel that has no drainage. So I don't know, they seem to really like it when I top off water like this and I just kind of let them sit until they kind of mostly dry out. But that's kind of worked for me. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do with orchids, but I don't know, it's worked for me. Now I'm just gonna top this plant off. And I really need to pot this one up. Look at how well rooted it is. Okay, actually, while we're here, I'm also just going to top off this soil. So I already had it out and everything. I feel like a lot of today is just doing little things that I don't always have the time to do just in my everyday plant care. I'll notice things that need to happen, but I don't always get around to doing them. So this is good. This is very good. I think this plant will be happier with the extra soil. I just noticed that my um, piece lily domino or whatever you want to call it is starting to look a little bit droopy so may as well water it right here right now. Now that the sink is pretty full I'm gonna go around my collection and do a little bit more of what I've been doing. Clean some leaves, let these plants drain, dry out, and then put them back and yeah, just kind of repeat the process. I know that I recently watered a bunch of these plants, but I think some of them might need some love. I think my Syngonium elbow probably could use some love. Oh, over here, this is a little straggler that's not quite tied onto the plank, but like this is one of the newest leaves that this plant has put out. I don't know how well you can see that, but like, wow, that's beautiful. And um, yeah, this is an all white leaf, which is not great, but sometimes this plant does throw out like all white leaves, actually a lot more than I would like, but it is what it is, I suppose. It's just gonna kind of do what it wants. But at least it still throws out some nice leaves like this and this. I don't know if the lighting's doing it justice. These are the leaves I'm talking about that and that oh my gosh that's so pretty but yeah sometimes it does have all white and all green i mix those up all white and all green it makes up for it with like the nicer leaves yeah i think that this guy just needs to be watered and i will chop off some of these like older leaves that are dying off and drooping we'll do that first pop off this guy there's some old Stragglers. Um, this I might just trim off the white because it looks a little bit unsightly. The white just kind of browned off. That's pretty normal. I am halfway tempted to trim off some of these all white leaves just because like they're not providing anything for the plant. If anything, they're just kind of taking away from the plant's ability to provide for itself. So I don't know. I think I am going to just try. I might just chop off here. That was impulsive, but that way it can put some more energy towards new growth. I'm also going to um, clean off these leaves too. Hey. We go. I think that that's gonna be pretty happy, but I'll set it aside to be watered. Let's see. I think this needs to be watered. You'll need to be watered. These leaves need to be clean. This is my lemon lime maranta, and it does have just like a few 
random spots that could be trimmed off. There's some leftover sulfur fungicide, I think, or water spots or something. But I'm gonna go ahead and take those off. Look at all of this new growth on my rattlesnake Aletheia or Gapertia and Cygnus, whatever you want to call it. You see that? It's so backlit. I hope you can see that. There's so many new leaves. I really need to chop and prop this Philodendron Campus Borduanum, and I would love to like make it a nice full pot and put it up a pole. But as of right now, this just needs to be watered. So I'll set that aside for that. These big, broad leaves collect dust the most. <laughs> so I'm really focusing on those plants. There we go, nice and beautiful. This plant in particular is really prone to having lots of extra floral nectaries that then kind of crystallize on the back. So then it leaves these little spots on the leaves. I don't know if you can see those. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a bunch of little spots on some of these leaves because of extra floral nectaries. They kind of crystallize on the back if I leave them for too long. So I'm just gonna go through and try to get all of those off. I haven't noticed any pests on this plant, but that was my initial concern when I saw all of those extra floral nectaries and stuff. Front and back. I know some people will use like microfiber gloves for this, which I think is nice, but I already have these little microfiber towels. If I didn't already have the towels, I probably would have gotten the gloves for this. This leaf is yellowing off. Well, hopefully that makes for a happier plant. Now I've got this mess to throw out. <laughs> This is a Tradescantia chrysophylla, and I definitely could stand to pay more attention to it. But at the same time, this is a plant I found that tends to like die back a lot, and I just have to keep up with pruning it, and then it kind of grows right back. Yeah, I definitely could also just pay more attention to it, and it probably would die back a little bit less, but yep, every so often I just kind of give it a good pruning, and it all grows back in the end, but it's just one of those times. That's the yield. <laughs>
I think I'm gonna have to wrap it up there because my kids are getting fussy and I've run out of time to film. So I only really got to do a spa day for the plants on my first floor. But one of these days, I would love to do a spa day for my plants that are upstairs. So if you enjoy this video, please let me know and I'll have to kind of do the same thing for my plants that are upstairs. Obviously, before I leave for my trip, I do plan on watering all those plants, checking up on them, whatever, like the plants that I didn't get to today. I'm just gonna have to do that all off camera because that's a lot quicker to do and I'll be able to do it when the kids are asleep in the evening, that sort of thing. But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, please feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe. All those things are super helpful for my channel. And yeah, I hope that you have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye-bye!